Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and I popped a quarter into the HLJ Arcade Machine to play one round with the Rio bot rendition of the Blodia, the Ryu of Capcom's Cyberbots fighting game. This is my first formal review of a Sentinel production, but I have been following these guys with growing interest over the last year and a bit. From Ryobot Gurren Lagan to Sentinel T-Rex's Black Getter. Blodia starts off strong with a powerfully well-rendered sculpt. This is the first Ryobot release to use large amounts of die-cast metal, and it is peppered all over the Blodia with enough frequency and even placement to avoid any kind of balance issues. He's also got a proper delivery of his red and white palette, with both colors coming out very boldly. Taking things a step further, there are actually several panel linings and edge highlights, which come out pretty damn clean for production action figure paint apps. The only major blemish on mine are some wonky panel shadings on the back of his head. The visual topper on the Blodia are his super tiny, super crisp tampo graphings, telling you to be aware of environmental dangers that may be coming out of the giant melee combat super robot. This is the part of the video where I totally gush about joints, because the Blodia has beautiful joints. Let me start off by showing you how he nods his head. It's pretty amazing, eh? If you want to turn his head, this thing has uh, some engineering for that. You pop this panel up a bit, and often when I do that I pop his head out, but... If you want to do it properly, you pop the panel up a little bit, just a tad, till it raises. And now, this still only really nods up and down, but the bottom of his neck can turn on its own axis. You can see that happening right here. And that's pretty cool. Popping this panel up mostly just gives his head a bit more clearance to get over his, uh, you know, his popped collar. Anyway, the head's only the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. You notice the waist was moving there. That's because there's a little ball joint, really nice ball joint at the waist, and if you need some extra tilt, there is full-on tilting mechanism here that reveals detail back here, or, or reveals, I guess, detail over here, depending on how you tilt it. That's friggin' cool. And then this shoulder. Look at this. User-friendly as hell. There's lots going on in here, don't get me wrong, but I just gotta do that. Now, the way that these shoulders work is there is, uh, a hinge for the shoulder pad, which is on its own separate rotational disc from the entire inner assembly. There's a ball socket, huge ball socket here, connected to the torso itself. There's a big ass pin disc style joint here, which moves this way too. Uh, if you want, you can declip this, because I totally did that on purpose. This also shows you a little bit of the just like solid friggin' construction here. I think, I think that's a piece of metal there. So that's pretty tough. Uh, this whole thing is built like a tank. The bicep can turn it like this. The elbow is double jointed. And it does stuff while it double joints. Uh, maybe it's easier to show you over here. It does stuff while it double joints. Look at all this revealed detail and things. Again, there's engineering happening here. And I don't have to engage in any of it. Because I, I just have to go like, I want to bend the elbow. And then other stuff happens. Uh, that's kind of, in a capsule, part of the beauty of playing with this toy. Uh, his fingers are fused into a fist. On this hand, because if we come on over here, uh, he actually has a fully posable hand with multiple joints in each finger. They're all pretty much identical. Uh, his thumbs and fingers are all the same piece. Uh, there's also, like, a swivel at the connection here. And that means that down here, the fingers can splay outwards a little bit. And there's also a cut in here, which means that when you want to ball this up into a fist, the fingertips actually have a place to kind of uh, push into and curl up a little bit tighter than if there was not a cut in there. Now, the question you're asking is, why is one hand posable and the other is not? Actually, the question you're probably asking is, why am I pretending like one hand is posable while the other is not? That's because there are swappable hands. So, if you want to be all proper, pull this off, stick this in, and now we've got double posable hands. And this is really how things are supposed to be, in my opinion, because this forms such a nice fist on its own. The only reason why you'd want to use these hands is if you just you just want a fist and you want it to stay like that, you want it to be perfect. Because if you compare them, I think it's pretty close. The thumb is a bit tighter on the sculpted fist. That's really about it. Like, you can even, like, when you're playing with this thing, the fingers don't really unwiggle while you're messing with it. Another piece of posability in here, which I guess is also somewhat a gimmick is that you can, uh, you can grab the front and the back of this and that kind of extends out and when you do that, that makes this thing extend out so you can reload it like that. It's kind of like a hydraulic punch thing. Uh, I believe this 
arm does it. Yeah, this this arm has uh, at least a similar function. It's not the the double punching deal, but this has a an extending piston punch here. And then the shield uh, can swivel around up and down on this little rail, you know, because because that's fun. It can turn as well if you want to have uh, I don't know this side of the shield showing for some reason. Another reason for all this stuff in here, which I'll show you in a little bit. First, I'm just going to finish talking about joints. Uh, below the belt, his legs, they've got a full range of posability with a thigh swivel, a hip joint, etc. And the skirt just gets out of the way. Just gets out of the way. Skirts back down, skirts out of the way. It's just it's very easy. It's not very finicky. Uh, this, this toy works with you. An interesting thing is that... The hip rotation here is actually, I don't know how easily you can see it, but it is a full moving assembly. Like, all this, all this gray stuff here, this gray panel, is the part that's moving around, which then has the hinge attached to it. So, this is very interesting engineering. Sentinel's really big on, like, what I would call non-conventional toy engineering. Um, like just slight differences from the norm you see on these kind of things. So, double jointed knee, I'll just bend it once for you. See, it does that. Here, let me do that again, because it's so sexy to look at while it's bending. Look at all this stuff just unfurling here. And, uh, that's not all. In the back, I've got these little doors. They don't really look like little doors until you start bending it and you see they compress inside. Once again, I don't have to worry about doing any of that. This is such a nicely engineered piece of jointery that it's all happening on its own. Uh, his ankles have got a similar thing where when you do the ankle tilt, a whole bunch of detailing comes out. And once again, it's quite simple to execute. Uh, there's no like, oh, I gotta move the double ball joint out here and blah, blah, blah. No, you just tilt it. Um, there's also, you know, forwards and backwards motion here and, and lots of joints in the foot. There's also this little flap. Don't even have to think about it. The toe joint can hella toe and reveals like a curved piece of sculpting that... Almost gives the illusion of a bending kind of tank tread. Uh, he's got these wheels in the backs of his heels. They don't really, well, they don't really spin, but they uh, they do move around on their own a little bit. And I'm not necessarily sure why, but you know, it's it's appreciated nonetheless. Anyway, this guy's posability is sublime. Oh, sorry, there's one more ball jointed gas tanks on his backpack because you know sometimes. You just really wish your your back was ball jointed. This hydraulic punch gimmick has a little bit of a parts reveal I forgot to show you. I just realized it when I was looking at it. That little thruster thing back there also pops out. But I'm talking about his arms. Basically, his arms use a keyed assembly system that is very simple to disassemble. Uh, as you can see here, see it's like a cylinder with a with a key, a little T thing on the top. And that really easily goes just in and out of the joint. And what's nice is it does that, but when you're messing with the toy, it doesn't really come out accidentally. You have to kind of grab it and pull it, and then it comes out. So it's not hard to disengage, but it's also not easy to accidentally disengage, which is a beautiful piece of toy engineering. And, and with this in place, you now you, uh, you can take other arms you might have lying around. This does not come with the toy. I just happen to have this extra arm lying around. You know, now he's got a big-ass fist. So, feasibly, Sentinel could release, like, accessory packs of other arms for this guy. And, uh, you know, Bob's your uncle. But, but you're saying, what about when the sprite in the Cyberbots game crosses to the other side and inadvertently, like, the shield flips from being on this arm to this arm? That's what this gimmick is all about. Well, that and, like, just having an unobtrusive way to not have a shield at all. So the shield's on this little rail, and it can slide around like this to the other side. Why would you do that? Well, if you swivel this around like that, and uh, you take this hand off and you know, put on the other side's hand, now he has the shield on the other side. This is, you know, you're not going to take apart your toy every time you flip it left and right, but this is really cool, especially for some of the 2P color schemes that are coming out for this guy, or, you know, alternate color schemes, so you can have, like, this guy facing off against the other color, and their shields will both be, you know, facing the right way no matter what you're doing. Uh, also, at the waist, there's one more point of modular disengagement. It's this kind of cross-shaped thing. This one accidentally popped on me once, ever. And I don't know why or how, but it, it doesn't anymore. I still have to kind of pointedly 
take it apart. And it's just so nicely done. Like, it's, it's so... Uh, I'm trying to think of another word to describe it. Just the way that you're able to have this whole system of, you know, bits and pieces that uh, can pop off, but do not pop off unless you really want them to. But then when you want them to, it's not scary to pop them off. It's uh, really well-toleranced stuff. Anyway, the last thing about the shield, let's say you want to just remove it because it's on a little peg. But this little peg is it's going to be sticking out. Well, you slide the little peg to the central bottom orientation and then push it in. Now the little peg is out of your way. But you want to pull it back out. That's fine because there's a little like divot around the top. So it's pretty easy to slide this out and get it to some part of the track where it doesn't have a hole behind it. You attach a shield back on and blam! That is how you play around with the equipery and the orientation of your Blodia. The posability on this toy is legit gorgeous and the last thing I guess to talk about is that this guy balances so well too because of the die cast content and um, here and here and here and a little bit inside like it's just really well balanced and it's really well engineered and none of that is my problem I just put him in a pose I want just start bending stuff put him down grab him by the ankles give him the old like I'm gonna take your ankle tilt pull him out push you down eh. and boom he's solid like Dead friggin' solid. The Blodia is a really fun toy! Is what I'm trying to say. We've already looked at the alternate hands, so let's see what else comes in the Blodia's accessory pile. First up is the Bit, Blodia's orbiting little buddy. This thing has a sleek front and hella crazy detailed backside, as well as the ability to flap its teeny fins, which love to fall off when you flap them. D don't, don't flap them. It can also plug into the included stand, a regular stock piece from Sentinel. But let me be clear, Sentinel make a nice stand. It's got an optional clamp for gripping figures manually, modular arm placement via some tab and slot systems on the base of the arm, two clips for connecting up with other Sentinel display stands, and room to slide a square piece of printing under the surface if you're into that kind of thing. Sentinel has impressed me in past, and the Riobot Blodia is a great representation of everything they do well. It's got great presentation, engineering that thinks outside of the box, and that indescribable in-hand feeling of something that is properly premium. The Blodia is an action figure that works with you when you try to play with it. Everything it attempts to do, it accomplishes with a touch of extra flair every single time. I have barely any interest in the source material of Cyberbots outside of the one time I played it on an emulator, and would easily say this is one of the nicest robot action figure releases of 2013. Impeccable. I highly recommend this to, like, anyone. You like robots? You like action figures? Yeah, you. You. What? Huh? Oh, sure, I guess some of you actually played Cyberbots. You're probably pretty stoked, too. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and this is probably the point where I should mention that Sentinel have gotten their money's worth out of this base design. There are five Riobot Blodias, and I'll be taking a look at one more as soon as I can find the owner of this scummy joint and get me some more tokens.